could you save it as an MP4 as well, please, afterwards? Okay. Thank you. Will do. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to show my screen. Um, let's see which screen it shows. Um, actually, I just clicked the wrong button here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to show a course that I already have open and just talk about the features um, of it. Looks like it's showing it the wrong screen. Here, let me pull this over. Oh, no, it's showing the right one. Oops. Can you see that okay? It's just grayed out at the moment, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. It appeared briefly, then it went. Okay, what happened? Let me try one more time. So you're not seeing anything. No, it's just gray. It's got a tick in a box that says skills to fit. Okay, application share. Let me just stop it and restart it. Okay. Sorry. No, it's all right. I'm just going to show my desktop. That might be easier. Um, there we go. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Um, so this is the inside of the PLD, um, uh, and it, it basically allows you to create automated events that happen at either a scheduled time or something that happens based off of the user interacting with the course. Um, so they score poorly on a quiz or maybe they score highly on a quiz um, or they view a specific piece of content and now you want to release something else to them. Um, it's really it's really powerful and allows instructors to pretty much automate a lot of things that um, otherwise they might be doing manually. Um, so it's, it's accessed through, uh, let me get back to the front page of the course here, it's accessed through the settings block, um, which is right here. So once you're inside of the course, oops, I just went too far back. I just restored this course for us to use today. Um, so if you're inside of the course itself, you can access it by using the settings block. Um, and you can also access it by clicking on the icons when editing is turned on for the actual activities. Um, there's a little PLD icon um, right here. So you can use either way. I always go to, into it using the settings block. Um, but once you go in, once you go into it, it opens up the PLD like dashboard, um, and this allows you to pretty much customize whatever you want. So if I just start off by adding a new role okay. into the course, um, I can go ahead and create a name for the role. I'll just say called a, a test right now, um, and then I have to pick the event for it. So I think some of the most common use roles are ones when a user completes something or if a specific grade is achieved um, and you want to release other types of content. So, so what you could do is um, look at an activity is completed for, say, a quiz. Um, you could customize it for any quiz in your course or pick a specific quiz. But you could go ahead and just pick it for, let's say, any quiz. 
and then we wouldn't specify the actual activity. But when you click on the activity drop down, it's going to filter all of the quizzes that are inside of your courses. So I could go through and pick a specific quiz if I only wanted to get feedback um, or have an action based off of that quiz. Um, so once you determine what the event is and pick the activity, if it has an activity mapped to the event, um, you would go through and then just click Add. So once you have the event added, you would go through and select any condition. Uh, you don't have to select conditions for your roles, um, but probably I'd say in, in a lot of cases you probably will want to have a condition um, to make it more specific. Um, not all of them require it, but for, let's say for the quiz, we have a condition that it only fires based off of uh, a specific grade. Um, so I'm going to go through and select the activity grade range. And then when I click the Add, it pops up the dialog box specific to the condition that I've selected. So for this, I'm just going to leave it selected at the activity which triggered the rule. We're going to be using this for any quiz in the course. Um, and I would like to send this for students who have a grade less than. Um, so what I'm going to do is say anyone who's, let's say, less than 80% in the course, we're going to have an action fire. Um, so I'm going to save that. Um, and then underneath the actions, I would define what I want to occur for students who have less than 80% or users have less than 80%. Um, so what you can do as soon as they finish that quiz, you could display an alert to them saying, student, you scored you know, less than a certain percentage, um, your grade is at risk. Um, you could send an email, say, to uh, the student with a similar type of message, and then you could CC the instructor who's enrolled into the course. Um, you could redirect them to a specific type of um, uh, remediated content, um, so you might want them to go to a specific activity so they can learn more about this content area. Um, you can also go and direct them to a specific location. Um, you can lock and um, unlock uh, different types of content within your course. You could potentially move them into a group. Um, so in a case where you might have a quiz that is a, a pretest, um, you could then bump the user into a group so that they only have certain content inside of their course using the group feature inside of Moodle. Um, <clears throat> likewise, you can go ahead and you can remove users from groups. So it, it really gives you a lot of options um, to have different types of actions happen based off of the user interacting with that course. Um, so a, a common one here for like a quiz uh, would probably be to send a message to the student um, or uh, unlock, unlock different types of content. I think more basic ones that when you're first getting started maybe is to send an email or an alert um, and just to get basic concepts of testing out the functionality and see where you want to go with it. Uh, but for this example here, I'm going to display an alert because I can show that to you like right now. Because um, I have another browser window open with a student account. So I'm going to create this and then show you what the actual student um, would experience. So here for the test alert, I could insert um, on the message. So to customize this, you could actually use tokens. So it's a little bit more personal to the student. So I would insert a token by clicking this button here and saying uh, student first name. And this is going to call in their name. So if my name is Rebecca, it would say Rebecca. And then I could also customize the actual scoring of what they um, received by clicking another token and saying they earn so many points or percentages for the current activity. 
Um, so I'm just going to say he earned the 20 points. And then you could just customize that message based off of what you're going to do for the action. Um, so I'm going to save it. When I save that message, um, it creates that rule right here, and I can go ahead and customize it however I want. Um, I have a student account over here I'm going to open, and I'm going to attempt a quiz. and score underneath 80%. I think I can just skip those and submit it without answering. You can see that I scored 0 out of 10. Oh, I'm in the right course, right? Um, any quiz? Activity grade is less than 80%. This might actually not be a graded activity, so uh, let me see what's going on here. Maybe I should have looked, created a different quiz first. Um, so the student, the final grade for that one was 10%, because actually that, that one should have fired. Um, displayed an alert. I'm not sure. You, you need to refresh the uh, browser. Uh, might be maybe what I should have done. Uh, I'm going to go into an actual uh, quiz that's not a pre-assessment that might be messing up what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to go into the final quiz here. Okay, and reattempt a quiz. Let's pick one. Not sure what I what is going on. Maybe I need more coffee. Okay. Hmm, this is quite strange. The activity which triggered this role grade is less than eighty percent, which I did receive. And explain alerts. Hmm. I am stumped right now. That should that should be working. Um, so that goes to the student the student email then, Rebecca. Um, yeah, we can do yeah, the email. Good text, isn't it? I'm going to send this to all users assigned to this course. I'm pretty sure I'm assigned as a teacher right now. Um, but what I can do instead, just to make sure, is do custom. Okay. Let's just do that at the same time here. And I'm going to go through, save that. And reattempt a quiz as a student. And I should receive an email. Let's see if I get an email. Let 
potentially I am, my logic might be off, but I'm pretty sure this is what, um, we could do it for a specific one. I, I, I'm not quite sure why it's not fine for, for any quiz. I've done it like this numerous times before without an issue. Let me try doing it for, um, Oh, I know what I did wrong. I selected the wrong event. It should be activity graded. <sighs> um, sorry. <laughs> the, no, way, so the, way, the way I just did that was like, um, was not, well, I did not select the right event. I should have selected activity graded and then quiz, not activity completed. Um, because the, with it completed, it actually fires when you go back to the front page of the course, that's when Moodle updates it. So here what I really wanted it to do is to update after the quiz was graded. Um, so I actually used the wrong logic um, in my demonstration, which is not great. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm just going to update this and it's going to work now. Um, so Sometimes it's a little bit tricky thinking about what the actual right event is. So the way that I had it set up would have made it fire whenever I went back to the front page of the course um, here instead of actually after the quiz was done um, after it was graded, which is what I was looking for. I wanted to take the quiz and then pop it up right away. Um, to the students. Maybe I should have refreshed. So what one that's typically done is that you send um, one based off of a certain grade range in here. Let me see. Highest grade. Uh, So this quiz has an aggregation method that's being used on it. Uh, that's saving it at 90%. So it actually is not going to let me fire it. So sometimes testing your role is a little bit um, challenging depending on what you have your aggregation method set to. So I'm going to come down to the quiz and change the aggregation method so that this this works. I have two of these in here. Um, so the quiz right now is set up with the highest method for the aggregation method. So it's in there was already an attempt on this quiz. Um, there now it's popping up. Um, let me change the grade to last attempt, and then it will display. There. So here we go. Let me refresh. Take this quiz. Now I'm getting emails <laughs> um, for those attempts. Okay, so I think I'm going to remove the email now that I have the action correct so I don't get bombarded here. Um, those are all of the attempts. Uh, Okay, so I, I picked a really bad quiz um, to, to go through and use uh, because it had the wrong aggregation method to really allow me to do it. But I should have probably removed the temps. Uh, this course already had user data in it. Um, so <laughs> the, the quiz itself, if I come back through, you can see that the last attempt here 
at 9, but I changed it so that it's going to fire based off of the last attempt for the grade. Um, I'll get a couple of these wrong. And there, now it score, it displays the score. Um, my name is just student in the system, um, so that's why it's showing that. Um, but this is the action um, for the alert message. It displays on the screen over it. Um, so every time that the student would score below 80 percent um, for this activity, it would, it, would, it would fire that. Now, with that said, uh, you noticed before it wasn't showing the score based off of the attempt. It's also the grade in the grade book. So if you have multiple attempts and you have a specific aggregation method, it's going to be basing it off of that, not the actual attempt. So if you have multiple um, methods, you'll, you'll notice that that's happening. So I uh, forgot that there was already user data in the, in the quiz. Essentially what you would do is just go through and, and set it up based off of the grade changing um, so that's, that's one example of how you could do it with a quiz. So you can also duplicate the roles in here. So if I wanted to, um, I could also uh, copy and then customize this to do something else as well. Um, you, can, you can modify the role and have it do multiple actions. But when you're first testing things out, um, I would recommend making them separate and then disabling the different ones so you're only focusing on one action at a time um, because it can get a little bit complicated depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so, so what you could do for, for this is um, you could release, release content for a low score. Um, so essentially it will have the exact same thing happening except for instead of displaying an alert for this scenario, I'm going to um, unlock, uh, unlock some content. So if you select the action um, un unlock release code and you click add, it lets you select the specific code that you want to use. So uh, for this, I'm going to use uh, just something simple. I'm just going to write test. Um, you can make this whatever you want, but you want to make sure that you remember what it is. And then uh, once you save it, you can go into the content within the course where you would like to release content. So if I go back to the front page of my course, um, and go to the specific activity that I would like to release, I could release, say, the end of course survey. There's two of these in here. Um, I could release uh, this activity right here. So in order to do this, um, I would go in and edit its settings. And right now it already it has a restrict access setting on it, but I'm going to change that. But inside of Restrict Access for Moodle, there's all of these settings um, for uh, how you can control how things are released based off of scoring, grades, user fields in their profiles, um, and then you control, can control how it appears to the student if it's grayed out or not. Um, but there's this piece here. This is a Joel specific feature that works as PLD. So if I put in test here, what will happen is when the user meets the um, conditions for that rule that I just created, it's going to release this content. Now, for this situation, would you want to release a survey? You know, probably not. But this could be like an entire lesson of content that's specific back to that um, items that you're testing on in that quiz. Uh, so you would you would come in here and, and save that, and then what would happen is. Uh, as soon as the user created that, that would release. 
Now what you could do is put a, a message there with the student saying this is um, you know, as a result of scoring less than 80% on this quiz, you know, you need to complete this lesson. Um, alternatively, you could go into your PLD roles, display an alert first. You could add to display an alert similar to what we just mentioned. And then you could also have the action to go to the activity. So this action here allows you to um, specify the activity that the student would go to. Um, so you, instead of like unlocking it, um, you could just jump them to it um, without any type of condition, say, if you just wanted to control flow of the activity. But in this example, um, you'd want to select that activity we just we just hit. Um, so it was a feedback activity for the end of course survey. So it would unlock and then automatically jump them there, say after like 15, 15 seconds. Um, so they would have time to read a alert that you would also want to add, which you could enter whatever you wanted here, just explaining what they're going to do. Or you might not want to put that at all. It might be the first page inside of that activity that you just explain to them um, why, they're, why they're in that lesson. Um, to the end user, they might not even know or need to know that the content's different from them. It could just be a customized learning path based off of how that user um, is performing on different content. It's just moving them around in a different path than, than someone else might be. Um, so you could do the same thing for a student who scored 100%. You might want to release additional information to them to go through um, at the same time that someone else might be going through um, a lower level content uh, to try to increase their, their performance. Um, so that's one example for, for the quizzes and how you can use the different actions. Um, and that's all based off of grading. Um, I'm going to save this here and just show you. When you roll over these buttons, you can also disable the rolls as you go. Um, and it shows this disabled. So if you're going through and just doing testing, um, you probably want to do that um, when you go to test out other ones. Um, so another example of a, a role might be uh, based off of completion um, is one that we use a good bit in our courses is that when the student first comes to the course, um, they are automatically redirected to the uh, About This Course book, which is like our course syllabus for our online training programs. And uh, the student, every time that they come into the course, it checks if they've viewed it or not based off of activity completion. So if you're using activity completion in your courses, then you can fire any role to have an event based off of its completion. So if I go to the front page of the course and see, um, there's a syllabus here. So I could do a redirect for the syllabus. Um, I'd want to go first into the settings for the activity and make sure that it's set up. So I don't have it turned on in this course. Um, that's why there's no block here. Are, are you familiar with activity completion at all? No, not really. No. Okay, so when you set up when you set up your course, you can have it look like a um, like a like a to-do list with like check boxes um, and and marks for the student. Um, so to do that, though, you have to enable it in your course settings. It has to be enabled on the site. Um, if it's not enabled at the site, then instructors won't be able to use it within a course. Um, so in here, you see this activity, um, the completion yeah. tracking. 
and this allows you to set this up. So if it's set to yes, um, whenever I go into activities now, it's going to have a new um, settings area to configure those. So you can um, base things for completed based off of viewing, um, based off of grade, um, based off of forms for their being posts, um, based off of being replies. Uh, each activity resource has its own settings. Um, for resources, they're all view. Um, but for the activities, it's based off of um, grade and uh, being completed and, and they're different. So if I go into the syllabus now, I will have the option to configure the activity completion. Um, so for this activity, it looks like this course had it set up before, um, but it's set up so that it's viewing. So if I wanted to use it, I would make sure this is checked and then, then save the activity. Then when I go into PLD, I can base a redirect um, for this activity. Now, the activity we usually do is based off of them not viewing this, and because it looks like it's already marked as viewed, um, that it's actually not going to work for the student that I'm logged into right now. Um, let me show you the student view here. Since now it's turned on, you can see what the activity completion looks like. It adds um, boxes here for all of the resources and activities in the course. You can choose not to show activity completion um, for an activity. You can choose to have it manual so that the student checks it or unchecks it. Um, but most of the time, I think it's, you want to be consistent either way you do it. But I think I always use it with the automated because it seems like it makes more sense the students aren't forgetting what they've done. So it's marked as complete when they submit the assignment. Um, you can make it marked as complete once you grade the assignment. Um, the instructor controls that in the settings when they do it. Um, well, let's say I have an example where I want to do a redirect. Um, let me go back in the PLD. What, what you would do, um, say if you wanted to make it for that syllabus, you would, you would add the rule. Um, select the event, activity, uh, completed, and then you would select the uh, type of activity, which it's in a book. So now it's going to filter by all the books in the course. Looks like I didn't delete the contents of this course when I restored it. Um, so I have two books. Um, but you would select the right activity here, and then you would add it as the event. So whenever the book named syllabus is completed, something's going to happen. So the condition needs to be that the student has not com has not completed that book yet. So um, the activity completed, we just leave this as the activity that triggered the rule, um, but you want to change it to has not. So they have not viewed that activity yet. Um, so we're going to jump them to the activity. And you can put in a delay if you want. So you could, you could, you could, uh, you can base this off of any event that that you that you want. Um, you might want to do this like every time the student enters the course. Um, so it make would probably make more sense in this situation to go to the the course is entered. Um, you know, the student probably enters the course maybe once a day. So um, the course is entered. Um, they haven't viewed this, I'm going to jump them back to it. Um, you could also uh, use this for like a reminder. Um, so uh, instead of redirecting them, you would say the, the course is entered, um, the student hasn't done this quiz yet. 
um, and then you would display the act, and the action would be like displaying an alert. Student, don't forget that you need to do this. Um, the, the thing with this type of event is, though, is that the student has to actually enter the course. It's not automatically going to check like every day and say that the student, reminding the student to take a quiz uh, by a certain day. You can certainly do that, though, with scheduled events. Um, scheduled events are events that have no user interaction in the course. They just fire based off of whatever condition you have set. Um, that's a newer feature. That one is called a reoccurring event. It's right here. Um, so a, a reoccurring event um, might be uh, the first Monday every seven days, you could say. Um, I'll just do weekly. That would make more sense. So every Monday, we could say at 8 a.m. Um, starting where are we at? Uh, next Monday. Um, and then I could set an end date here. Uh, every Monday at 8 o'clock, I want to set a reoccurring event that's going to check if the student has logged in or not. Um, so, so I'm going to set this for this Monday. It doesn't, it doesn't allow you to, it uh, doesn't like you to put them in the future. Um, let me add that. There we go. Or at least it tells you it's in the future. It's not that you can't, but it, it flags you. And, it, and it's really not going to fire until next Monday, so it doesn't uh, matter. Um, Monday, not Tuesday. So let me do that, fix that. I made a mistake. Um, so here you can see the reoccurring event. It's every Monday at 8 a.m. Um, and then the condition uh, would be based off of uh, whatever the student has or has not done that you are looking to check for. So of uh, course, uh, I think a popular one here is course login. Um, so if you said the student hasn't logged into the course in the last seven days. Um, and then you could do whatever action. What, what do you want to do? Typically here you would send an email. Um, that's a pretty popular one. Another uh, one that you you could use that's pretty popular is a course enrollment letter. Um, let me see. The course enrollment letter, you can uh, you can send it to students based off of whatever ac action or event in the course you want to happen. So you could say course center. Um, their uh, event, uh, yeah, the event would be like course enter, or you could make it based off of has not completed something, and then you would you would trigger an enrollment letter, which could be through an email, um, or you might want to release a file to the student. Um, what we do in our courses is we have a course syllabus, as I showed you before, and we have that redirect, and then. Um, the course enrollment letter fires, um, but it doesn't continually fire for the students because they're, it's based off of the completion of that about this course book. So it's marked as complete. So it's because it's based off of completion and they're redirected, it only triggers once. Um, the one thing you can't do with PLD is say, trigger once and don't fire again after that. So you want to think about the rule that you're creating and when it's triggering and how many times it might trigger and possibly how that trigger would would stop. So it's not um, continually firing. So you can't send uh, an email once. Every single time if you have an action to send an email for an attempt, they're going to, and they can keep scoring below 80% and you're sending an email, every single time that happens, they're going to get an email for that quiz, which you may or may not want to happen. 
but it's something to think about um, and realize that you're getting a bunch of them. The other thing that you can do is make your conditions um, based off of a student, uh, the student rules. So as an instructor going in, you would not be getting the messages. So whenever you set these up, you can go ahead and select user rule check and say this only fires for students. The thing is, is that if you're in the course testing it, then you're not going to be seeing those fire, um, which is fine, but you want to make sure you're logging in as a student, um, checking those as a student account. Um, so, you know, you probably have a test student account that you use. So you'd want to make sure that you're using that, similar to what I'm doing here, by having two different browsers going on and just, it, just checking them as I go. Um, let me see. Um, so we covered those. Are, are there any um, specific ones that you're thinking about that you'd like to use that I could go ahead and, and set up? Uh, no, not really. It's, it's, it's interesting seeing how it's done. It's just, uh, I think it's, it's going to be a case of just trying them out and seeing, seeing how they work because uh, there's there's a, an awful lot of uh, potential things that can be done this way, isn't there? Yeah, it's there's like a learning curve for it, and you have to make sure that your logic is set up correctly, or obviously it's not going to fire as you expect. And, and it makes you step back and say, wait, well, what am I doing wrong here? Um, but you can really do some creative things if you think about think about what you want your user experience to be like. Um, so I had showed you how you could release um, like a resource. You can release like an entire topic doing the same thing because those release codes for the activity completion are inside of um, the topics as well, inside of Moodle. So you could potentially do a pretest and then release a topic to students who score a certain percentage and a different topic for other students. Um, there, the possibilities are really endless, um, but I, I, would, I would say that one thing you want to do is really figure out how you best want to use it and then um, start with the end in mind, I guess what I'm trying to say. Start with the end in mind and, and what's going to happen to different students if you really want to create a um, differentiated experience. Um, and then to make sure that you're testing it, um, really making sure you're testing it, because it can, you can accidentally send information to students. So, um, so for like the quiz, let me save, disable and save. Um, this one is a quiz one. So say you're going in and doing an, an email. When you specify the email, you're figuring, you're going to tell the system who it's coming from and who gets it. So when you do a recipient, um, you could not thinking logically about it, say user scores less than 80 percent and I'm going to send them an email. Um, well, if you selected all users of the course, just not, you know, it, it's happened before, so that's I'm showing you. You select student. All the students enrolled in the course are going to get this message. So you want to make sure that you don't do something like that. Um, what you'd want to do is have it set from whoever you want to hear, a teacher or a triggering user. Um, but you'd want to select triggering user. Triggering user means the person who made the event fire. Um, so user has to complete an event that's based off of their action in order for that to work. Uh, so after the user X 
goes through and creates a quiz or completes a quiz. It's graded. It's it's less than eighty percent. They get an email from the teacher with whatever you wanted to add. Um, but you can send these from actually from like the student. You could send students a message from themselves. You could send it to parents. Um, these are all of the roles that are associated in your in your system. Um, and the, the interesting thing here is that you can send yourself reminders. Um, so one that I create for myself is that students enrolled into the course, I make a TLD event to send me an email so that every time any student uh, is in there, I, I, I know. And one reason why that's beneficial for me is that we have open enrollment for our, for our courses. So, um, you know, there might be a time when there's nobody in there, there might be 10 students at different times, it just, it just varies. So, all of a sudden to get an email that someone's enrolled is, is very useful information. Um, or uh, the other one is the scheduled completion. Uh, for the instructor to know who is and isn't accessing the course is, is useful. So you can uh, BCC yourself on something that's going to a student. Um, so if the student is scoring uh, at a certain level, you would you could BCC, your, BCC yourself. Um, and whenever you, you back up and restore uh, these, it's going to work on the other site, if you have a development and a production site, it will it will work for those. Um, so any teacher who is then assigned to the course is then going to get those same, same ones. Um, you could change it so it's custom so that um, only a specific person gets it. Um, if you have like a, a teacher in the course and one wants events and a, and a different one might say so you might want to, to modify it that way. Um, trying to think what else are other ways that you can. Um, let me see. Yeah, so for for the quiz for the quiz one, um, back to the quiz because I think it's a pretty popular one. You can do a more generic one too that's not based off of a certain condition or grade, you could just say you completed this quiz and then tell the student their score as well. Um, all of these tokens in the in the email, in the alert, allow you to really customize um, the information that you're showing to students. Um, so if you would create, say, an enrollment letter, um, we use student first name, and then you've been enrolled, and you could say, you know, the start date and end date that's based off of the enrollment information inside of Moodle. Um, uh, and then you could tell them the link for the course so it's in their email so they don't forget. Sometimes people enroll in something, um, and then they're like, where was that site again? Well, if you send an enrollment email to them the first time they go in and has the link, they just have to go back to their email to get that. Um, you could do uh, telling them how many, what their overall grade is. So if they, they complete a quiz, you could say your overall uh, grade now is and uh, show the, um, the grade percentage or, or letter um, for, for the course. Um, for the actual activities, you can say, um, if you had a quiz that was 9 out of 10, you scored 80% or whatever percentage it is, um, and then you could say the minimum grade or maximum grade um, for what the activity was. You scored 9 and then put a slash and then put maximum grade, so it's automatically calculating it. And that's beneficial because if you change the overall point um, for that quiz to say 10 to 15 and you put in your PLD that it was 10, well, if you use the token instead, it's going to automatically update that for you, um, which is nice. Um, 
So this, those are some of the, the tokens and the way that the email um, the email feature works. Uh, you can also send emails to, I don't know if this is applicable to you or not, um, to pretty much to anyone. When I, when I should do that custom, it allows you to just specify an email, and that's what I did earlier because I wasn't sure if I was enrolled or not. Um, but you can email anyone there. I mean, that could be, um, it could be a, a group of people who are responsible for certain information inside of a course. I think um, you could use this for, uh, there, for like one instance, I had a, a client who wanted to have it be CC to subject matter experts. Um, a specific person, but they weren't actually enrolled in the course, but they needed to know that the uh, training had been completed. So instead of having them go in here, they just got a, a blanket email that said, I for my student, it told them a token with a student name, um, and then it just said this, this person, you know, earned their certificate, I think it was. Um, so that's like a way that you could use that too. Um, But like I said, when you go through and set your conditions, you, you, you have to be careful. And you don't have to set conditions if you always want it to fire. Um, and you can, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but um, your conditions, you could say, um, you could have like a list of like multiple conditions, but only one of them need to be fulfilled. Um, so. If any of them need to be completed, so student, um, it could be based off of multiple activities being scored less than a certain percentage. Um, you could fire it off of that only. But let's say I had um, try to think of a situation that activity completed. So activity completed would would make sense here. Um, so if user completed activity assignment, remove this other one here, or if they've completed, we have a quiz. Um, both of these could be conditions, but it only matters if they've done one of these activities. Um, then the the action could could complete. So how how would this one be used? So if you release content to your students based off of their scores for a quiz, student A um, took a uh, got less than eighty percent and they took a lesson. Um, student B took the quiz. They were redirected to a different lesson. Uh, but no matter what the student received on that score, when they're finished with those lessons, you want both of those students to have the same action. Maybe you then want to release uh, a different lesson for them to go to at that time. So what you would do is you would say that when any of these conditions are fulfilled, then you would release that other lesson. Um, but you don't need them to complete both. Um, so by default, it's here. It's selected by all, so it's going to require both. You'd want to go and select any. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that's why it makes it easier if you think with the end in mind and those paths, because then you can start to um, I think what you'd want to do, if you really want to do something like that, is to draw out a actual map um, for the branching and where the student would go. And then you could create the, the PLD roles to um, support each of those actions to make sure that everything's working together. And then what you'd want to do is go through and test 
each scenario to make sure that it's it's jumping to to the right places. Um, so you'd have you know, test the case of, of a low scoring student and then make sure it jumps in there and then, and then go through with the next student scoring above it and to make sure that that happens. Um, but your your most common messages are, are really going to be um, I think things that are happening right after they do it, um, but to really give you the power um, of creating a different experience for your students based off of their performance, it's really going to be releasing the content and using release codes. Um, I have a, uh, a sheet here that I can email, actually I'll email it to you. I can share it in here, but I think it would be better if it was just in your email. Um, a PDF that has all of the, um, all the common, commonly used rules. And it, it tells you how to set each one up. It's like a nice little job aid. Um, that sounds good. And this actually, are you enrolled in the intermediate course right now? I think I saw one yeah, of you were, maybe, or yeah. had been. Okay, so that has like a little, um, I think there's an interactive in there that is probably, you, know, you could practice going through and clicking, but um, here I think you got a lot more than just from going through the course. Um, but uh, I, I, this job aid actually might be in that course, but I'll send it to you just to make sure you both have it. Um, but I would recommend starting out small and saying, I want to try to do an enrollment letter. Um, so set up the enrollment letter, go through test it, and once it's worked, disable that rule in the course so it's not firing and doing other things. Go ahead and work on the next one you want to work. Um, the interesting thing with the PLD rules is that you can back up and restore them with your courses. So every time you have the course, it's not like you have to recreate them, uh, but what you you have to be careful with is if you delete an activity from your course and then um, re-add it, say you uh, had the syllabus in one course, in one section of your course and you updated it there and you wanted to pull it into this other one, uh, when you pull it into that other course, even if the name same is the same, it's not going to know that that's the same activity just because of that. You have to go in and modify it. Um, what will happen is, is that when, when it's saved, um, it will show as red here, indicating that there is an issue with it. Um, so you would want to go in and modify it and relink it to the correct activity um, if in that cer certain situation. The same thing will happen if you restore it to a different site that has different, different um, roles on it. Um, so if you have, say at the site level, um, you, on your development site, um, maybe you have like teacher and then, but on your, uh, your other site you, you have them called facilitators or you, you have a customization at the site level. Um, you would, you'd want to update them when you restore them there um, as well. What will happen is there'll be it will it will flag and tell you nobody on this site uh, the, or this does not exist on this site the uh, the, the role there so you'd want to modify it um, but when you come in here and this is all happening um, the firing and whatnot uh, if you if you have issues with troubleshooting with what fired uh, you can go into the history tab um, the history tab is going to show you everything that occurred. Um, you back up and restore the course, you can bring the history with you or not um, by unchecking it when you do the backup process. But um, as an instructor, this is pretty useful because you can see what's happening, which may not be intentionally what you want to happen. So you want to go through and, and look at it. Um, so for example, uh, you create uh, a, uh, you create an enrollment letter, but um, the event wasn't set up 
crack. So it just keeps triggering, triggering. But you would know that would happen was happening if you were checking your history. Or say you created a a role and uh, you expected it to behave a different way, and you have students in it, and students emailed you saying, "Hey, I just got this." Um, you can go in the history and see what happened and say, oh, my logic was wrong. Um, but, you know, if you're testing and doing this beforehand, you can avoid some of those. Um, the other thing that might happen when you start doing these is that students don't really realize <laughs> that these are automated messages. So, you know, I've gotten responses from students like, oh, yeah, like, you know, they think that the email literally came from you, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, but it's automated. So you know you have to remember that sometimes too. When you and if instructors um, aren't the ones developing their courses and these are in there, they should be in the they should be um, informed that they're in there. So one that they can customize uh, who they're directing to. Um, and two, so that they're aware of what's being sent to students in case a student responds to one of those and, <laughs> and the teacher's not really sure where that came from. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Yeah. That's great, Rebecca. That's just giving us a really good overview of that. Well, I think that once you wrap your head around it and really uh, start using it that you'll fall in love with it. Looks amazing. Yes. When we when we first um this feature was released, uh I think it's almost three years ago. Yeah. Um and when it first was released it was like a little bit overwhelming because it's like, well, how do you set this up? And, you know, and then you really start using it. And it's like the most simple um, uh, event that you set up and you start firing things, it starts to become very powerful. You, you see it. Um, at the same time, there's sometimes you want things to happen and, and the logic, you know, you have to kind of you have to step back and kind of think about it. Um, but what what I would recommend is if you have certain ones that you think you're going to use, it kind of create like standard ones that are used in your courses, and then it's easier to set up. Um, so uh, this document I'm going to send you is like a little uh, uh, like a job that has a different types of commonly used ones. Maybe you want to have standard ones that you use in all of your courses as like a baseline, yeah. um, and that would simplify it for for teachers saying this is how you do this, um, and then they can add and build from that or customize it as it is and change text and whatnot and things like that. Um, but that's probably a, 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 an easy way to get started is to you know get some basic roles get people understanding how the actual logic of the system works, and then from there, it can really blossom into creating these really customized, like, learning events. Yep, sounds good. Okay, well, I will send you both um, a link for the recording and um, about you want the you want an MP4 file you said? Uh, yes, so I can just uh, download it and then I can put it on my uh, tablet if that's okay. Okay, so that's sure. Great. Um, I will do that. Um, and I'll have to share it with you somehow. Maybe uh, um, like through Dropbox or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you um, or um, if you, if you got um. What's the, what's the other one that they use? Uh, I can't remember. It's gone off the top of my head. Um, we share. Um, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll think of it. Um, there's another one with a similar like Dropbox. Um, yeah, and I or if you give me a link to a course, I can upload it as a course file, and you could just download and delete it too, something like that. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Or uh, I think the uh, I think the site was called WeTransfer.com. And I think you can load up to about two two gigs on that. 
Oh, okay. I'll look into that. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll send you a okay, link. Okay, well, nice talking to you guys. Okay, thank you. Good, thank you. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Bye.